Hi, I'm Gaurav Nandrajog. Uh, I'm an Indian international squash player and I'm very proud to be a part of the Anglian sports family. So I started playing squash at the age of nine but then obviously had to leave it for a couple of years because my father was in the army and he had, uh, we had to travel with him while he was on posting and um, obviously the courts were too far off from where we stayed at that time and, and yeah, just the opportunity wasn't good enough for us to, for me to keep playing squash at that time. So two year break and then I started off when I was 11 again. And uh, yeah, ever since then, I've just been playing squash on a daily basis. Started taking it a little more seriously when I was about 11 and a half, maybe 12 years old. So a year into me just playing at the club with, uh, with all the national level players. And uh, Ritwik was the person who coached me first to start off with, who got me into some serious uh, playing at DSY. DSY, the Defense Services Officers Institute is where we used to play. And they started vanishing off for tournaments about a week at a time every couple of months. And so I, so I was left with uh, no one to play with and they used to feel a little dejected as to why everyone just suddenly left and went away. And so I asked them when they came back and they, they said that we go and play tournaments. So, so I was like, why do you play tournaments? And they're like, well, we are training for a reason. So to get our national ranking up and it helps us, you know, play the sport that we're so passionate about, you know, get our ranking points higher get a ranking up, not only in India, in the world as well. So that intrigued me quite a bit. And uh, from then on, it was, it was me training at the club, but now for an actual aim. So the short term aim was just to get my swing and my fitness right and everything. The mid term aim was to play the next tournament that there was about three, four months from then. And the long term aim was obviously to become number one in the country. So yeah, after a short time of maybe about a year or so, I uh, I played the nationals. My first nationals was 98 at Delhi Gymkhana. And of course, we've been in Delhi for about 20 years now in any case. I played the, the 98 nationals over here under 14. And uh, so was fortunate enough to beat about three of the top six players in India at that time. And so, I, you know, so I got into it, I started enjoying it a lot more. That life sort of chose me after I became number one in the under-15 category. When I beat, the, well, I lost to Saurav in the 98 Nationals. Saurav Goshal who is now the number one. And I beat him the following year in the 99 Nationals to become the under-15 national champion. And from then on it was being under-15 number one and top four or top three in the under-17. And my first India representation was a few years, a couple of years after that in 2001 at the Asian Junior Championship where, um, where well, I represented India as the number one in, on the team in the juniors in the under-19 category and I was probably, I was 16 years old at that time so I was still under 17 but ranked number one under 19 as well. So it was, it was good that I was ranked, you know, and at that time you were allowed to play about more than just one category, you were allowed to play about two, three categories and how many ever. So I've played about, what, nine matches a day as well. And uh, all quarter-final matches, three quarter-final matches, so pretty tough matches. And, um, and thereafter I've actually not won a national championship after that, but I have been number two about five times after, <laughs> including in the men's as well, where I've lost to Saurav pretty much all those times. So Saurav has been obviously playing really well and unfortunately I went down with a, with a really bad burnout about 10 years ago. In 2006, again Delhi Gymkhana, I, was, I beat Ritwik in the semi-finals, who was then the number one in world number 35. So I was looking and I was poised to actually you know, break through that barrier. I was, I was about 117 in the world at that time, just outside the top 100. And usually what happens is you get all the sponsors and everyone looks at you a little more seriously once you crack the top 100. So I was really looking forward to that and, and my whole run was cut short by this, by this stiffness and this, uh, you know, absolute uh, deadening feeling pretty much. I wasn't able to get up, I was sleeping for 19 hours a day and um, all in all every single part of me that was used to actually play the sport was injured uh, just so all, all wouldn't function properly so my wrist i couldn't lift up my racket anymore my elbow shoulder i got cervical spondylosis i got three slip discs in my 
um, thoracic in my uh, lumbar as well and um, and also my lower back was gone um, then my hip and my hamstring my my heels everything was gone basically everything that I required to actually play squash was not there and that affected me mentally as well to quite an extent so the last 10 years I was in number two at that time I held on from to my ranking for about another what four to five years maybe after that it was uh, it was good I mean you know just to, just to see the struggle happening within me at that time and sort of fighting it fighting it every single day every single minute and uh, not letting the other players sort of get ahead of me and that was the whole aim basically since I had already established myself at that level and I was the one to beat at that time besides Saurav obviously so the both of us ever since from 98 to 2006 had been playing literally almost every final that there was and um, the whole thing was to maintain that supremacy over the uh, over the circuit and you know keep fighting to get better and better and better and that time I was playing the PSA as well so a good performance in India you know beating a Saurav over here and beating a Ritwik over here would mean that I was good enough to be about top 40 level in the world as well which is which is quite frankly at the age of 22 really good and um, so once that was cut short perceptions changed my mindset changed my whole view to things changed as well it's taken about a decade for me to come back and now that I am back I'm back stronger I'm back fitter I'm back uh, just mentally a lot more mature a lot more experienced obviously and uh, and things perceptions have definitely changed and changed for the good and um, I have not got a single operation done my whole life um, but I focus more on alternative medicine and a lot on breathing and pranayama and a lot of yoga and stuff like that so which is before modern medicine came in that's what people used to do to get fine as well and I'm thinking the quality of life at that time was any case better than what it is today so so I prefer to follow something like that and I hope a lot more people would also sort of back me and reinforce the whole thought that that is a better way to go about it that the human body is regenerative in nature and it will only if you give it a chance and you get on the right path from the word go so that is my coaching mantra as well I also I also coach and I have been coaching for the last six years um, which has been an experience in itself so coaching and playing so having a 10 to 12 hour day is a regular thing for me in any case which has grown me up a lot so handling so many things in one go and now that I have my energy back I'm just looking forward to getting back on the circuit and kicking some butt <laughs> so hopefully everyone has my back on that because I know I have mine I believe in myself right now and yeah so there's about another maybe what five seven years to go before I have to hang up my racket, so I'm going to make the most of these 5-7 years and I'm going to love every single second of it.